What's good? It's your boy, that motherfucker Steve, tuning into MCTV. Appreciate y'all checking us out. Today on the podcast, we've got uh, a lot of great information for you. Uh, we're going to tell you about some dope new hip-hop collectibles that are coming out. It's the holidays. A lot of people are dropping dope new stuff. Um, and also, uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about the upcoming uh, trip we're going to go on to Detroit and New York. So, uh, stay tuned, and I appreciate you checking in and, and, and watching with us. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's just get right into it. Uh, right now, you know, uh, it being while this is being recorded, it is uh, middle of December, um, Christmas time, coming right around the corner, a couple weeks away. Uh, a lot of dope stuff is being dropped right now. Um, within the last couple of months, I've seen, I don't know how many different hip hop collectibles and, and different things come out. Uh, there has been some super dope stuff from Run the Jewels. Uh, they just dropped their action figures in uh, end of November, uh, limited edition. Um, you know, Eminem dropped a new jersey with Mitchell and S. Uh, it was the Detroit limited edition jersey. Um, Eminem also dropped three action figures uh, on Black Friday, um, limited edition. There were only I think 300 of each that came out. Um, yeah, I mean, just so much. Chino XL do dropped his uh, new graphic novel comic book um, and a new track with Adrian Young. Um, so shout out to Chino on that. Uh, congrats on the success there. Um, you know, there's just there's there's been so many dope hip hop collectibles. It's tough to you know for a guy like me, it's like a kid in a candy store. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, you can see I got, I got the old school chronic back there. Uh, that's a, that's a tech picture I took years and years ago at the KOD tour down in Kansas City, uh, with him and Slaughterhouse and Glasses Malone. Shout out to Glasses. Uh, shout out to, Slaughter, shout out to Slaughterhouse, man. Um, I had the opportunity to kick it with Joe, or Joel Ortiz a little bit and chop it up with him on that tour. Um, I actually was one of the promoters that brought him to Des Moines. Um, so big ups to big ups to all of them. Big ups to Tech. Uh, you know, Tech. Tech has always been a real solid dude, and uh, you know, somebody that I can that I can gain perspective from, and and you know, just watching his success and how he's navigated this industry has been a little bit of a, a what's well, been. I mean, not even a little bit. It's been a, a template for how to conduct business in this industry, uh, and so you know, I, I don't copy it as well as I probably could uh, especially having some of the insight that I've been fortunate to have but but really just looking at what tech has done and trying to uh, I don't know if, with, with, without having a better word for it mimic um, you know his his ability to to navigate this and really do well with it um, has been you know inspirational so uh, so big shout out to, to the homie tech and uh, yeah so you know what I mean like uh, getting back to what I was talking about, just there's so many dope collectibles coming out right now, um, and and I'm a nut for autographed hip hop memorabilia. Uh, we just did the unboxing. Shout out to Cartuccio. Um, uh, he did a dope, dope uh, collaboration with Inspector Deck uh, from Zarface and Wu Tang, and uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm a I'm a big fan of, of all of these things and, and it just shows that, you know, even during the pandemic, artists were able to do dope collaborations with artists and, and you know, crank out limited edition gear. Uh, a lot of people were working on music when they were shut in, you know what I mean, and just writing. And there's been a, there's been a lot of cool stuff really coming out from hip hop lately and it's, it's exciting to see all that and, and really see where the game's going and, and what what the you know what give you a little foresight into what may be coming soon um so so big up on that uh, as far as the the new york and detroit trip um you know just kind of putting that all together right now uh hotels are booked uh i'm going to circle back around with uh some of the people and that are, that are coming along on the trip and and really touch base with them and say hey you know uh we're roughly well i mean actually we're three months out you know, so where where's your head at on this? Are you for sure going? Um, 
you know what your plans but I've got a pretty solid template and a day-by-day -day itinerary kind of pinned in to to try and maximize something like this for me personally uh, in order to just organize my thoughts and maximize everything I'm able to do uh, I learned this a long time ago that you you almost have to set up an itinerary so you can you know especially when you go to places like LA um, New York is the same it's such a it's such a huge city and getting from Manhattan back up to uh, Queens is, is gonna take some time and so if you can conquer everything you need to in Manhattan while you're there uh, and maybe even you know if you wanted to go I'm trying to visualize this on a map but if you wanted to go from Manhattan to you know one of the other boroughs that's right there on your way back to Queens which is gonna be up north uh, you know you need to you need to plan that route accordingly so you can maximize your travel to hit those locations uh, and I learned that a long time ago traveling around LA and and you know in Des Moines you know we're real fortunate if you go five miles it probably take you five minutes maybe seven uh, in LA going five miles with traffic and, and everything else can take you 20 minutes maybe 45 minutes you know what I mean so you just gotta you I learned you have to plan accordingly for shit like that and so you know with the with the innovations that they've done with Google Maps and, and business addresses you can you can literally structure a trip where you maximize your travel so you don't have to backtrack you're not burning up a bunch of time throughout the day going from you know one side of Detroit to the other side of Detroit and then trying to get up to Warren Michigan and and over to Pontiac and then back down you know what I mean like it's just it's you burn up a lot of time and and you spend a lot of time traveling that you really wouldn't need to necessarily do if you plan accordingly and structure things a little bit so um, I have no problem sharing those details with you guys as we get a little closer I'll let y'all know how the trips going and I'll even uh, you know maybe we could throw up a screenshot of actually what we've we've got going on uh, in terms of, of how I plan out a trip and, and mine may be a little more meticulous than you actually need to plan but uh, I, I do I kind of enjoy that a little bit um, and it also gives me some structure as far as you know just making sure that I maximize my trip because you know traveling from from Des Moines to, to Detroit is, is eight, nine, maybe even ten hours depending on the weather and, and you know whatnot. So you gotta factor in stuff like that. You gotta maximize the amount of time you're in a city, capitalizing on the abilities of different things and, and you know, make a list of what you need to bring. Uh, and then, you know, if if you've got it in the forefront of your mind, you know, months in advance before you leave, then you have the opportunity to go, oh uh, you know what? For this shoot, we're gonna need a drone. I gotta make sure I got my drone with me. Uh, you know what? Who brings a drone and only brings one battery? You wanna have a backup battery so you can charge that battery while one battery is being used, right? So, so there's no downtime with the drone, and you know, the little things like you can you can do for that and to plan in ahead. Just even if it's, it's you're an independent company, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a smaller company. I'm, I'm essentially this is it. You know what I mean? I got I got lots of people on my team that help me out but when it comes to going to the bank and getting money and, and putting stuff out and, and going to the store and picking up supplies that's that's all me and so I gotta bankroll that I, you know and when MCTV needs something it comes to me and I gotta look at the piggy bank and go well do I have the funds for this or do I not and so I totally understand when you're able to when, you, when you're not able to get something or you, or you look at you look at what I'm saying and you go Steve we, we we don't got extra money to do that you know I'm gonna I'm try and do everything I can to show you how I get by on a very minimalistic budget and hopefully you know you can you can do the same um, and, and if you got a better way please share it with me you know what I mean drop me a comment and let me know cuz again I'm, it's all a learning uh, it's all a learning move and I'm trying to learn what I can and, and figure it out uh, as I go and there's been plenty of mistakes along the way uh, but I'm trying to prevent from making those again. So you got to learn from your mistakes and, and just, you know, make sure that you're planning accordingly so that everything runs smooth and uh, and you can just maximize the trip the best you can. So, yeah, we've got the up and coming trip to Detroit and New York. Lots of dope stuff coming. I can't wait to share that with y'all. We're going to try and go live 
and and constantly be updating and really dropping a lot of content there's for sure what four five music videos coming out of that trip to New York not to mention all the uh, the still images you can find us on Instagram and check those out and we'll just be constantly dropping material and really sharing that experience with you and letting you know what uh, we'll let you know exactly what we've been doing and and you know if you want to duplicate the trip in your own manner and, and take little cherry pick little bits and pieces of what we've done and and incorporate that and really go and do something dope you know, if you, if you do that, tag us in it, share it, let us know what you liked and what you didn't like and, and you know, how your experience was because, um, you know, this ain't a travel vlog by any means, but we're also excited to see what people liked and didn't like about what we've put together and, and the things that we've done with it and, and, and how you felt if you went and did them same ex the same experiences. So, um, yeah, that'd be dope. That'd be dope to really hear what people have been doing. Uh, the homie... The homie uh, Jesse, my dog out of Denver, um, Tattoos by Look is coming with us. Um, my little brother Cap's coming with us, I think. He's still kind of up in the air. We'll see. Um, pretty sure he's coming, though. Uh, my homeboy Matt is supposed to be coming with us. It's my security. It's a big dog. Uh, he should be coming with us. Um, yeah, so I mean, there should be. It, it's pretty much the same crew, plus plus maybe a couple other people uh, that went to the last New York trip. So that should be that should be a real dope trip. Uh, we navigated New York last time, no problem. Uh, came back with a lot of dope content, and and you know we were really able to put together some sick stuff. Uh, once we got back to Des Moines, we're gonna have a mobile workstation this time, so we'll be able to edit on the fly, and, and so we won't have to get back to Des Moines and realize what we had and what we didn't have. I will say uh, a little tidbit for anybody that's, you know, hustling independently and trying to put together records and stuff. For me personally, I have found uh, making a little, uh, I, I like to leave like a, a an email to myself and then I can always revert back to it on the fly. I don't have to go, oh man, I don't have that piece of paper or whatever, but I leave myself an email of on the day of a video shoot, I want to make sure that I get video drops to promote the product. You know what I mean? You're, you you may not be able to link back up with this artist and get a, a phone video drop from them. And, and if they do, maybe, I mean, who knows, but maybe, maybe their phone game ain't really up on point and you get a blurry phone drop to try and promote your product and then it just, if you're already out there with a film crew, get your get your video drop. You know what I mean? That the day you're out there filming and putting these these visuals together for YouTube and Vimeo and you know anywhere else you want to share on Facebook, uh, make sure you get those those video drops that day. Uh, make sure you get your artist release. You know you gotta you gotta make sure that the artists sign off on the release saying they were willing participants in the video. It's it's important to have your paperwork put together because you don't want to have something pop up later and have somebody say they weren't willing to be there or, or you know whatever the case is so you know I mean those are those even if it seems silly you know what I mean like having your paperwork put together is important uh, I would also say that uh, getting getting extra shots is better than not enough some people may disagree with that it may you know there, there is a certain point where you have too much footage and, and it's it, it becomes messy trying to sort through it all but I would also say uh, in a situation like me where I have to travel from Iowa to New York to go film these videos and to Detroit to go film these videos, it's very costly if I have to make another trip. So for me personally, uh, gathering extra footage, uh, multiple angles of the same shot so you can mix it up, um, those, those are all important uh, aspects to incorporate ahead of time and make sure that you you have your little checklist of things to just to refresh your mind the day of going into a shoot like I want to make sure I get this I want to make sure I get that and you know I mean maybe for you it might even be better to print it out and have you know have one of the homies over there with a little marker and just check it off as you get it just so you can go got that I got that because again I mean for me personally to have to make a trip all the way back to Detroit to try and film something or or to try and plead with an artist and say hey man you know, we got a dope video. Can you send me? Can you send me a drop for it? I would like to promote it on Instagram and and you and YouTube and Facebook. You know, and just drop something and kind of hype the track a little bit because that's part of the product. Part part of the product. Once you have a dope video, now you have to take it to the lab and sit down and edit it. But also, you have to hype it up. Uh, which leads me to my next point. 
you know, as a newer guy, I mean, I believe, I think we have six tracks out now. Um, small EP, little project we put together and we're rolling into the next one. I have learned so much from this and I, and I hope I can give back in these little um, episodes for, for my podcast, but I hope I can give back to somebody so they don't have to duplicate the same mistakes that I made. I, I'm definitely not the end all be all and if somebody has another way of doing stuff, I'd love the feedback too. So feel free to comment. You can, I share my email. Most people have my phone number off of concert flyers and whatnot. You can shoot me a phone call, I don't care. But for the most part, uh, I give out these little tidbits that I've learned in an effort to try and save somebody else the time so they don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. That's a, it sounds like a parent right there talking because well, I'm a parent and I feel like that's something I would say to my kid. I'm telling you this because I made these mistakes so you don't have to make these mistakes. But real talk, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the little tidbits of stuff that I've learned along the way because this is new to me. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not the end-all be-all. I'm learning every day as I go with, with different mixing techniques. You know, I sit in a studio session with an engineer or I see how somebody records and lays their track down and, and goes back and does their PowerPoints and their ad-libs and that's, you know, it's I'm a student of the game so that's all learning stuff to me and it's, it's I'm loving every minute of it. I grew up a fan of hip-hop. Hip-hop has always been my passion but even even if even if you love watching racing, you don't know necessarily how a, a, a driver prepares for that race, and you don't know how you, until you sit in the in the car with him. You don't know how he he handles each turn, and and you know. So just as an analogy, just because you're a fan of something, you don't necessarily understand maybe all the workings of it. And and for me to get to go behind the scenes and create the scenes and and actually see how these things are created and put together. Has really been a special, special uh, trip for me, and I enjoy every minute of it. So I hope you do too. Uh, so that gets me back to uploading music. Personally, I go through DistroKid. Uh, I found it works really well. Uh, they're really reasonable uh, with their with their costs, and I feel like I get a lot. I can I can upload unlimited stuff. Uh, I can upload unlimited music, individual singles, a full body of work, however I choose to do it, I can upload it, and it's unlimited for one set fee. That's worked out well for me. I know other people like TuneCore and, and whatnot, and, and and there's probably different pros and cons to each one, but I'm just going to speak from my perspective with DistroKid. With DistroKid, it's worked out really well. I can upload a track. Uh, you know, we've got six of them up now they all went up as individual singles and so by doing that i now have a little bit of a, rep a rapport with apple music and 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 spotify and so as i upload things now they go up a little quicker and and so that works to to help facilitate and get things up quicker and at a certain point we were uploading music and i was just getting i was so thankful that that I was I was complete with another track and we were excited to get it out and drop it that I wasn't I thought the next step after I got the music up and it was at the distributor was to start sharing the link and and really get it out there and 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 promote my music myself and and that works to a certain extent I would never say to not do that because you control your fan base on Facebook and Instagram and and you directly connect with those people and and that's that's your home base and your grassroots foundation of people that you're going to be able to reach out to and go, yo, I dropped I dropped a new track, check me out. Uh, official MC TV on YouTube, peep it out. We got Chino XL on the new track. We got Black Pegasus on the new track. We got the homie Ren Thomas on the new track. Whatever it may be, you know, doing your video drops to promote that is gonna go a long ways. But not every one of those views translates to a listen. Uh, and so in my own personal experience, you know, I thought the, the hustle work that I was doing was going to get me to those those listens, to, to translate to listeners and, and organically people would add me to playlists um, so that so that each time I added stuff, that foundation would grow and, and it would make it easier. Now, th there may be some truth to that and, and that's probably, again, it's probably a good thing to continually do. To, to continue to grow the music and, and grow that fan base. But I have learned, this brings me to my point, long story, 
Uh, this brings me to my point where you got to get that music in the hands of your distributor at least 30 days in the case of DistroKid. 30 days, it has to sit on their desk and then Spotify can have an actual person listen to it and they can put it onto a playlist. We did that with our last track, The Maze, and the the amount of saves and ads that we got through Spotify. Spotify is the, is the the main one that I monitor. Uh, we're on Apple Music and Amazon and all that other stuff too. But I but I get the most analytic kickback from Spotify, and I get so I, so I incorporate that data, and that's why I continually refer to them. But the the music went so much further by us getting it on the desk of them uh, at Spotify via DistroKid. 30 days in advance to the music coming out. You want to upload that music 30 days before it's going to drop. And, you know, I watch a lot of these YouTube videos of different people talking about strategies. We dropped on a Friday and and they say new music comes out on Friday, new play, playlists drop on Friday. And so we dropped on a Friday too. And I think all those things in conjunction with the little bit of stuff we did through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter to hype the track and really try and get the word out there. This track, you know, the first week had 1,500 views, 1,500 plays on Spotify. Um, and I don't think some of that was was organically through my own uh, subscribers, but a lot of that was through the playlists and stuff that, that Spotify put us on and help, help push the music itself. And... It's it's really it's been the best received uh, release we've done yet. So I, I would really encourage you to to structure re your releases. Um, I thought I was structuring them and, and planning and hyping prior to and building up a little bit, but you really have to get it on their desk and just sit back and go, all right, I've got 30 days from today for this music to to be reviewed and put in the appropriate places by the by the algorithms and, and by the actual reviewers at Spotify and you can go in and pitch it to different playlists and and I'm still learning all the the different pros and cons and and, and functionality of how you do that and and you know if, if somebody's got a, a YouTube link that they want to drop to another video of how to do that or if they've got a, a tidbit and you want to email me and let me know I'd love to hear you know how you guys do it or or, or from a pro that has been doing it you know longer and maybe better than me i'd love to know how you get your music out there but but from what i've learned you got to give it that 30 days that's our music our last track was received so much better and it reached so many more ears by being on that desk for 30 days and getting the the full review and the opportunity to be put on different playlists and and really go the right route so that being said you know we've already got the next one in the chamber and and we're pitching it and and figuring out exactly our, our release plan. Uh, there's a new video coming out, an animation video. I already kind of spoke on that a little bit to to keep the things going with the maze before we get to the official video that we're gonna go film in March. And so, you know, these are just it's just more content that we're creating to give back and, and keep people engaged because if you keep people engaged and you continually give them a reason to come to your channel and check things out, then then you you keep them with you. You you don't want it's just like Facebook and YouTube, right? Facebook wants to keep everybody on their platform. They don't they 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 almost kind of uh, I don't want to shit on them, but they almost kind of shadow a YouTube video. They they will promote their own content above a YouTube link that you post because they want to keep you on their platform. They don't want you going to YouTube because if you go to YouTube, then you're going to go and and go down that wormhole there. They want you to go down the wormhole on Facebook. They're going to try and feed you the next video as quick as possible to keep you engaged and on their platform. It's the same thing. If you have dope new content that's constantly coming from your channel and you've got a nice arsenal of videos in your channel lineup, then people will be more engaged. Oh man, I didn't realize MCTV dropped this track with Rusty Jux. I didn't realize MCTV dropped this track with... Marv One, I didn't realize MCTV dropped this track with A Ward out of Kansas City. I didn't realize MCTV dropped this track with DNA. Man, let me let me peep that out. Let me see what they got going on here. Bar after bar after bar. You know what I mean? So that's really that's you know that's how you keep them engaged. But also, it's another it's another avenue for people to travel down and go. 
what's this guy been doing? What's he bringing to the table? You know, and so that's as I navigate this YouTube world and and try and figure this all out. I'm learning that that's it's important to have these things out there. Um, which also brings me to my next point. I got a dope video up with Bangladesh, the producer who produced for Ludacris, Eminem. I mean, the list goes on. Bangladesh is from Des Moines. Uh, he also did a, a seminar in Des Moines several years ago. It's it's kind of a lengthy video. I uploaded the full video on to my channel. You can check it out. It's Bangladesh and Ryan Ford. Uh, Ryan Ford is from Des Moines as well. He was a exec at... Uh, the Source magazine in the mid-career of it and he he was a, an a, uh, editor exec and I believe that was his title I don't have anybody here to confirm that but it was it was it was something along those lines I believe he was the editor at the Source magazine and uh, shout out to Ryan Ford I was able to chop it up with him this week um, it, through my father-in-law ironically uh, and uh, shout out to Pat for the for the plug on that um, but I was able to to link up with Ryan again, and you know the the stuff that he dropped in that seminar that I filmed and uploaded. You guys can peep out um, the stuff the stuff that that they were talking about. The little tidbits of knowledge that they say in there is is still true today. And I think it was probably ten years ago that I filmed that and uploaded it. But the you know if if you don't have your Twitter. If you don't have your, you you may not be a guy that tweets. You might be like, man, I don't have time for that. I don't, that ain't me. To not have that presence, you're you're selling yourself short. You're not bringing, you're not giving it, putting out everything that you could put out. Uh, you want to be able to share those links on Twitter because 10% of your fan base may be on Twitter, and and they may not catch your Facebook drop, but they may catch a Twitter drop. They may only subscribe to your updates on Twitter, but they follow you on Facebook. And so they'll maybe see it in their timeline as they scroll or maybe not, but they might get the update on Twitter, vice versa. You know what I mean? It could go either way. Same thing with Instagram. You might be like, I ain't got time for all that. You know, I just do, I just do my Facebook. Well, Facebook is cool, but you know, for me personally, Facebook's got a lot of drama on it. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm on there and I post and and you know I'll scroll through and hit the homies pages and like them, you know, and see what they've been dropping. But Facebook has a lot of drama on it. A lot of people venting on Facebook, and you know I had a shitty day. I popped a tire, ain't gonna make it to work. Blah blah blah. I got fired from my job. You know whatever the case is. A lot of people go there to vent. And so personally, you know I Facebook can be kind of a Debbie Downer for me. And I'm like, man, I just as soon people on Instagram. It's just a picture or a video. Either I like it or don't like it, but I keep it moving and keep scrolling. And so for me personally, I, I, I tend to be on Instagram more. Uh, if you want to see where I'm at on Instagram, it's at official MCTV. Uh, humble plug there real quick. But but yeah, you know what I mean? Like if, if you're not pursuing all those avenues to get your content out there, you're selling yourself short. I set up a Reverb Nation the other day. I was in my own personal mind, I've looked at Reverb Nation as, and, and no taking anything away from them, but I always looked at it as uh, kind of a locals thing, and it did. I didn't feel like it got much uh, traction in terms of, you know, I don't think, I don't think Rockem has a, a Reverb Nation. I don't think Jay Z's out there pushing his Reverb Nation, and I don't think Eminem's out there pushing his Reverb Nation. So, you know, I, I just kind of looked at it as, and not. To, that I'm trying to put myself on a pedestal with any of them fellas because everybody is way beyond the skills that I'm bringing. But my point is, I've always looked at it as uh, a local thing. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to reach a local fan base. Not that I don't want to reach a local fan base with, with what I'm doing, but but I feel like you, you garner more things. Your, your reach is much bigger on other platforms. Um, but taking my own advice, I set up a Reverb Nation the other day. Uh, I, I, you know, I got an email the other day from Mellow Music out of New York. Um, Joel Ortiz works with them. Apollo Brown, you know, a lot of dope artists work with Mellow Music. Mellow Music is on Bandcamp. Uh, they, they, you know, I got an email for the holidays saying check out, you know, because I, I bought some stuff from them. It said check out our stuff. We got a sale going on on Bandcamp. I don't have a Bandcamp. 
I'll be honest. As of as of today, I don't have a band camp. That doesn't mean when I'm done with this, I'm not gonna go set up a band camp page, uh, because it's another facet for me to get. It's another fishing pole in the water. If somebody hops on band camp and they they peep out my stuff and they go, damn. What's this guy got? You know, they might go down that wormhole and then they go, oh, I found him on Instagram. I found him on Twitter. You don't know what somebody's desired platform is for how they take in music or take in videos or music videos. You don't know necessarily what that platform is. And so to sell something short or to say, I'm not going to put my content on there, uh, you're hindering yourself, in my opinion. I mean, again, that's what most of this is, is my opinion. So there's no guarantee that, that these are true facts. This is just stuff I've learned and I've heard from people over the years that, you know, not, and, and, that, and if it's a free program, right? Twitter's free, Facebook's free, Instagram's free. If these are all free programs, yeah, you do invest a certain amount of time in, in promoting that content on there or putting that content on there. But once the content's already created, the, the time invested is minimal, so don't sell yourself short. Uh, I mean, for the most part, that's really kind of the uh, the podcast for today. I'm probably not going to make these super lengthy, especially since I'm just kicking it by myself. I don't really have a back and forth dialogue with anybody. It's been a busy week. Uh, I got a lot of stuff in the chamber, like I said, that I'm planning and putting together. The studio is kind of a wreck right now. I got uh, I got this dope new ring light in. Shout out to the homie uh, Jesse. Tattoos by look. Shout out to Jesse for the uh, the plug on the uh, the Sunpack ring light. It's got me looking nice and crispy. I hope so. Uh, I got a little two by two screen. I didn't plug into the big monitor for this one just because I'm I'm rolling solo and this is going up on the fly. Speaking of that, I got a jet pretty soon. So I better cut this short, but I appreciate y'all checking in. Episode three, we should get back to having two people on here. So there's a little more back and forth dialogue. It ain't just me rambling the whole time. Uh, I do like to hear the feedback. So after you peep these out, let me know what you think. Hit me back. Um, I tried not to say um so many times this time. I just said it again, I know. But I think I did dial it back. I, I was conscious of the fact that my dumb ass kept saying um. And so... Uh, somebody will count them too. Watch, they did. They've done it in the past. Oh, we're gonna we're we'll gonna take shots at Steve, but uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, I'm I'm getting better at this. I'm learning. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm a student of the game. I'm trying to I'm trying to get back a little bit and and really share my love of hip hop with you. And you know, I've always heard the game is to be sold, not to be told. I'm trying to give the game away. I want everybody to do a little bit better and share my experiences with you so you can incorporate them and don't take any of the shorts that I had to take to get to where I'm at. So, big ups. It's your boy, that motherfucker Steve. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit like, and uh, drop me a comment. It helps with the algorithm and it lets me know what you think, what you like, and what you don't like about what I've been doing on these. And I'm probably going to get roasted by a couple of y'all, so go ahead and do that too. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm out. Have a very Merry Christmas. I'll catch y'all soon. Peace. In the carpet, I put two into my target. Speaking the room darkens. I'm thinking that I'm a Martian. Put faces on the curtains. Best think about what you starting. Soon as my face hardens, my next text is a marksman. Your thoughts was a beaming now they inside of one. My father's a madman. Where I got it from? Dirt got it done. Never heard they got his son. The pad down all smooth until they got a gun. I'm 320 with two Cubans dangling off my traps. They think I move weight, but got it all off a rap. Record companies said it. Contracts, I toss them back. Fuck, Fuck the publicity stunt. I know the cost of that. Real as it ever was. Yeah. Tools keep getting in from uh -huh. coming to an end the way we did it on. We did it. You